I want to read this letter uh, from, let's see, Zach Tucker. It's a question here in the mailbag. Uh, the coverage of the LPNC, really, uh, the national convention, really interested me as I've been considering the joining the party for a little while now. And then after what I'm calling the influx of 2018, I was wondering how you're feeling about the Libertarian Party in general after seeing a successful convention and how this flood of Libertarians who have at one point expressed the uselessness of the LP will affect the party. Keep up the great work. I love the book recommendations and can't wait for you and Harry to get back behind the mics. Thanks, dude. Zach Tucker. Uh, so how am I feeling about the Libertarian Party? Uh, as I said in those episodes, I definitely felt more uh, positive about the Libertarian Party for sure. I felt that it was um, uh, the best convention out of the four that I've been to. It was the most kumbaya as everybody left. The LNC before that was fairly functional, and uh, it left seem seeming like it was going to be a much more functional LNC. Now, what's happening right now is ludicrous because... Mm -hmm. Um, Joshua Smith, who ran for chair, and Karen Ann Harlos, who is the secretary with the pink hair. Um, you know, I've I've met them both. They seem like nice people. Uh, and Karen, especially, you can tell she's very dedicated. And they both traveled to like so many different conventions and got to know so many people. And I met so many different libertarians that were there because they were inspired to come vote for Josh, for instance, for chair. Or join the Mises Caucus, and I think that they brought a lot of people to that to the party, and that's a really good thing. And Josh was running on a platform of get stuff done. I think he sometimes uses a different word, but let's go with get stuff done. And what has happened? Uh, what had happened was a de a de evolution into um, using the LNC for personal spite. So Matt. Keneal, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. I never get his name right. Uh, but the Libertarian Socialist Matt and Mike Shipley uh, are a constant thorn in Joshua's side, and, uh, you know, as we discussed on those episodes. And generally, they're, they're online a lot, so they seem bigger than they probably are. But there were like 13 people that identified as part of the Libertarian Socialist Caucus out of 900 people that were there at the National Libertarian Convention. So we are not talking about any kind of real danger to the Libertarian Party. And I also have to say, for Mike and Matt, these are two people who are running for office. They don't, they're not Antifa members. They're not like bashing people upside the skull. They're not trying to drive cars through marine depots. They're, they're trying to work through the process. They're running as candidates. They're volunteering on campaigns. They believe in the Libertarian Party and its growth. They just have a different end game for anarchy. Uh, and it's the original definition of anarchy, according to Perdome and, and Bakunin. And, uh, you know, and then eventually, after New Harmony failed, as we've talked about on some past episodes, it morphed into anarcho capitalism. And so. They espouse even a more uh, an older version of anarchy, and so I I don't see I see these two talking to people in in ways that are not antifa like, and they're not shutting people down. They're patient in answering questions. Uh, do they sometimes employ tactics that are unfair? Yes, but I would also argue that most of the different active factions in the party do that. Uh, as we've documented here. So they do they have a right to exist in the Libertarian Party? If they pay their $25 to become members, then yes. you got to follow your own rules. And if you don't like the rules, then you change the rules. It's exactly like what we talked about with Twitter. If you, de if you determine a set of rules, then you need to follow those rules. And so what Joshua Smith has done is, and like I said, he has personal issues with Matt and the Libertarian Socialist Caucus because they were exceptionally antagonistic towards him during his campaign. And, and as Matt said here on the program, I did it because I know what type of person he is and I wanted to expose his short temper because I think he's dangerous for the party and I want I wanted him to play into my hands and do what I knew he would do, which he did, and that ended up h causing him to lose his election. So it was it was political strategy on Matt's part. And they continue to do that, and they continue to uh, give Joshua opportunities to take the bait, and he does. And so he is using the non-binding resolution feature of the LNC to denounce libertarian socialists and, and draft all these different bylaws proposal or not bylaws proposals, but resolutions stating that we believe in property rights, which is in the statement of principles. 
It is, it is part of what the body has decided on in the statement of principles. It's not something that needs to be re-voted on because we already all believe it, and 13 people don't. And so it's an incredible waste of time for the party, and it's incredibly disappointing to see somebody who has a fair amount of potential in leading people to be active in the party waste everyone's time on such a silly silly motion i mean it just it's and and it's divisive and it, it like the party for the first time has gary johnson uh, larry sharp nick sarwark and mark rutherford all running for offices that, for major statewide offices that could have serious impact and make big splashes at the election at the ballot box they desperately need time money and volunteers mm -hmm. and those are the people that you get to work for Okay, and you know, likewise, like people like uh, people who are maybe not friendly to Joshua, but people who are friendly to your cause that can give you some insight into the very me mentality that is starting to take over and the socialist mentality. They can give you some. They can sharpen your sword by arguing with them. Right. The more you talk to them and the more that you understand what they believe and and understand their arguments, you can then use that to defeat people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Bernie Sanders and all of those robots. But the real enemy at the end of the day is not the thirteen socialists that were at the National Libertarian Party. It is the people that are trying to silence us on platforms. It is the people that are trying to get Mastercard to shut down. Uh, you know, uh, Patreon accounts. It is, it is people who are using the state to sh silence people. Matt, mm -hmm. Matt, and Mike, and all these libertarian socialists a expressly say they don't want to use the state to initiate force, which means they belong in the Libertarian Party. And no, they're never going to grow past twenty people. You know, the amount of booze that they got at the national convention when he said rent is theft was intense. And so we're we're all we're all chasing our tails not getting shit done at a time when we need to get shit done in an effort to appease a personal vendetta from April. And it's really foolish, and it's really a waste of time. And I think people, instead of buying into the demagoguery of, uh, of if you don't support me, then you believe in socialism, God. that's bull, that's bull crap. Yeah. That is Trump-level, that is Trump level demagoguery, mm -hmm. and we need to reject that completely and fully in the party. And we need to say, no, that's not true. Like Sam right. Goldstein voted no on the. I know Sam Goldstein. He believes in property rights. He's been. He's done more for the Libertarian Party in 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 the last thirty years than most people I know. And he voted no on the motion. And somehow he's a socialist now because he disagrees with Josh Smith. It's foolish. It's childish, mm -hmm. it's a waste of time, and it's a complete abandonment of everything that you said at the convention. Right. So if you believe in making the party uh, a strong political force in America, you have to cut the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And to everybody on Facebook engaging in this debate, you have to stop too. Because I have to say that if it, it's really impossible to recommend to my listeners that they go get involved in the Libertarian Party. Because the people that I meet at the conventions are awesome. But when you go and actually um, get on Facebook and get in some of these groups, it's horrendous. And Facebook and social media is the biggest problem for the Libertarian Party. It used to be its greatest asset. Now it's its greatest fault. Because it just exposes all these petty little dramas that mean nothing. And, you know, Matt and Mike and the other two Libertarian socialists in the party are not Antifa, okay? They're not infiltrating anything. They have no ability to ever gain any political power, and the more that you uh, draw attention to them and Streisand affect them, you're going to make them more powerful. So we're not the party of purges, and that's that's exactly what this is. It's a, it's a way to make people feel uncomfortable and leave the party, and in some cases people have expressly said that. But at the end of the day... Reason your way, like stop being so insecure that these thirteen people exist in the party. Like w the libertarian movement is strong enough to handle thirteen socialists. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's just unbelievable to me that we can snatch victory from the jaws of is it snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? Yeah, or something like that. I mean, it's just it's such a wasted amount of energy, time, and resources when you've got four of the best statewide campaigns. There were just. 
three or four elections in Tennessee at major county levels, like countywide elected officials in Tennessee. Uh, you know, these are great successes, and the party is in really good shape, but you wouldn't guess that if you actually followed the party on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You've got Evan down there in Arizona helping Saw work out, doing everything. Like, he's got, like, the... He, He's got a great chance down there, and the last thing he really needs is to deal with this petty drama bull crap inside of a political party, which, if you really don't like their merits, then debate them. You know, bring them out and debate, have conversations and talk. Deciding to do stuff like this, come on. Yeah. You know, are you that scared of his idea? Are, the, are their ideas so scary to you that you can't bring them up and talk to them? Right. That means, is there truth to something they said? Is there something that, that triggered you? Then it was like, wait a minute. They could be onto something. Well, yeah, because that's the biggest problem most libertarians have with socialism, the government force part. Oh, they, they don't care. They don't because we know, eh, it's probably gonna fail. Right. It's gonna fail. We've seen it fall it fail. You know. But as long as there's no force, no one dies, no death camp, go ahead, try. Go ahead. Have yeah. fun. Stop yeah. being so scared yeah. of ideas. Mm -hmm. Libertarians are so insecure about what they believe and so in and especially the younger ones. And it's, you know, I've, I've just been through this so many times, and it's like the party will survive. You know, people have come in with bad ideas before. You know, we survived Wayne Allen Root. <laughs> we, we're going to survive this one. So, 